Hello everyone. Welcome back to New Soccer Wars. I'd like to break format here for just this episode and tell you of a dream that I had. But having this recurring dream where every time I play this game I get dragged into the ninth circle of hell. Well last night it, it was different. Satan himself appeared and escorted me down to the ninth circle of hell. We went through several corridors and several hallways until he stopped by a door, one of many. And he opens it and says, here you go. We got about uh, uh, several more new circles of hell for you now that you are playing Sakura Wars. And I'm like, oh, uh, how many are there? I ask him. And he says, <laughs> well, you know, um, I don't think I've ever seen the bottom. Well, uh, anyway, down you go. So deeper I go, descending into these secret circles of hell that go deeper than the ninth circle of hell. And here at about that third circle of the secret circles of hell is episode nine of UDJ's new Soccer Wars Let's Play. So first of all, we're going on a date with Claris because it'll help her get inspiration for her new play. Right? Right. So where is the first stop to go? But uh, how about the bookstore? She likes books, right? <laughs> is she gonna get stuck in the bookstore reading every book? Well, uh, no, but, uh... The plot right now is that, again, we're, we're taking Claris on a date. A quote-unquote date. Because she needs... Proper... She, she needs proper inspiration to finish the last few parts of her play. And I guess going on a fake date with her superior officer is the best way to do it. And Sakura and Hatsuho are following behind because, ooh, tee -hee, what are they doing? What do you think they're doing? And today is it going to get... It's, it, it, so we're already at a, at a low place right now. You know, contrived plot, stupid bullshit. But trust me... As the minutes tick on, it is going to get worse, and worse, and worse. And so they found out how to read books. Claire is teaching her superior officer how to read in the first place. Oh, you think we're going to read books? No, it's like, can you reach that book for me up there? And he's like, ah, oh, okay. And up oh, there too close. As if he couldn't go, oh, excuse me, I'll just go ahead up and reach there. But no, it's got to be like, oh, you're so close. Ooh. Have you watched the Beauty and the Beast remake? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. Do you remember the part where showing Belle the library was basically a giant humble brag and he was still an asshole? <laughs> For some reason, I get vibes from this. <laughs> I just think, ah, oh, yes, I can reach the book at the top of the shelf. You like books too, huh? Check out how many books I have. It's like, okay, come on. Do we even know what kind of books she likes? All we know is just, it's just books in general. <laughs> Excuse like, me. Well, like what? Do you like tepid romance novels? Do you like the classics? Do you like to read reference books? Hi, I like book. Oh, really? What kind of book? Book? Oh... So you're one Tech of those, manuals. if it has a front cover and a back cover, and has pages inside, you like it. Student manifestos. <laughs> Live journals. Oh wait, that's not actually physical. Just like, you know, whenever her eyes just graze text, she just can't help but read it. And serotonin jams into her brain. This is why Nintendo 3DS games stopped having manuals, because Claris would just never play the game and just read the manual. But they still have stuff inside. They're talking about special deals and warranties and shit like that. God damn it! But at least that stops after like an hour. So what Maybe. do I like to read? Well, uh, books on tactics, really. Tactics on how to date. <laughs> oh! Peter do do. Ah, the only sensible answer. Well said, Kamiyama. <laughs> Wait, you didn't want to say gentlemen's magazines? That sounds great. What does that mean? You know, I figured the, like, a ma magazine like The Futurist is a gentleman's magazine. Certainly not for young people to read, I don't think. Well, I have a feeling since Kamiyama actually used the word milady to take Claris on to his date with her, I, I believe gentleman's magazine is just a guide on how to be a proper gentleman. Oh god, it's Fedora Beard Monthly, isn't it? 
Excuse me, m'lady. I went on to Reddit for my dating advice. They told so, me I should take feats of your pit. Uh, take feats of your pick. Oh god. <laughs> You can leave that in. I can't believe I even <laughs> attempted that and failed miserably. <laughs> so, we're getting our first taste of the other, uh, the, uh, other locations in Tokyo by not moving around at all of them and just standing here, stuck still, like an audience in captivity, only occasionally answering the occasional question. Now, like, what, what, what can we do? We can hold hands, I guess. When we did this in 5, refresh my memory since it's been a while, but uh, we had to move to the different locations to start these sub-scenes, correct? Yeah, there were a whole lot of different scenes you could take because there was like a time factor. It's like, right. oh, well, maybe, maybe we can check out the coffee shop, maybe we can check out the library, maybe we can go to the park, maybe we can go to the construction zone, maybe we can go to Chinatown, maybe we can go here, maybe we can go there. But here, it's like, ooh, if we hold hands, oh golly, jeez, wow, is this what being in love is like? Well, I just thought she was, <laughs> you're getting the wrong idea, I don't want to actually date you, but, you know, to make it convincing, maybe. Oh no, you're quite repulsive. <laughs> Oh my god, every girl just... It seems like they just woke up from a like a 20-year nap or something like that, and they don't realize that, you know, feelings exist, what a date actually is. They probably can't even be in the same room as you, or they might just spontaneously combust. Oh. Alright, we're about to take a few more steps down in the tunnel. It's about to get worse. Oh, let me guess. The steampunk Ferris wheel is going to stop when we're at the top. We're going to be stuck up there, just she and I, in That's the same cliche. car. No, 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 no. We're cutting corners here. The Ferris wheel is out of service. Oh, my God. They actually cut the trope out. Wow, I actually did not expect that. <laughs> Expectation subverted. Yeah. Why would you want to thrill the audience when you can just cut it out? <laughs> I'm just visualizing all the other animes I've seen where that exact same scenario happens. And then, you know, in a specific scene in Persona 5, it does it too. Except it's way different in a way. Where it's actually requested, hey, can we take like one more ride? Because uh, I really want to stay here with you. Asking for one more ride is something I am very accustomed to. You ever saw Lord of the Rings? You know, the Battle of Helm's Deep? You know that how that happened, right? They couldn't afford it, so the orcs came, and they were like, Oh shit, sorry, and they went home. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I thought you were actually asking for Helm's Deep trivia, and I was like, Alright, this is my zone! Ask, ask me how long it took. How long it took to film that entire, like, ha hour and a half of game. Alright, time to film. jump down a few flights of stairs. No. 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 Because I am now going to be pulling my hair out. So this is the girl that hates us and wants us dead, right? Yes, but she's acting very friendly toward us, and... Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm, I'm realizing that uh, there's quite a few similarities between this Soccer Wars and Dead Rising 4. There were no editors for the script. It's this beautiful, lovely, lavish Chinese restaurant that they own. <laughs> uh, what's a good idea for the only two Chinese characters in our game? Well, fuck it, put them in a Chinese restaurant in medieval Japan. You know my thoughts on Danganronpa. I hate fucking arrogant characters, so... <laughs> It's kind of bad when I'm forced to be buddy-buddy good friends with these arrogant fuckheads. So this Chinese restaurant is basically what our theater is to our operations, you know? We have a lavish theater and are failing. They have a Chinese restaurant and are thriving? Yes. So I'm tr so I'm going I'm going to try and be as Another combative and standoffish as I can against this guy because I hate this douchebag. 
<laughs> so he's, he's, he, they call him the burning chef. They call uh -huh. him the burning chef. We have three fire extinguishers on hand because he keeps setting the kitchen on fire. Witness his uh, very strange cooking style. I think we need to find a new term for fiery passion. Fiery passion just seems like a blanket word now. I think we need to update Bull that. Bullheadedness. Arrogance. Rambunctious. So, dragon fried rice. I'm gonna taste it, and I'm gonna say how crap it is, you know? Because uh, I'm gonna, like, you know, have the most neutral expression I can have, because they're probably gonna ask me, right? So we take a bite of this piece of shit's rice. Maybe you should do what I did for that Yoshi's New Island review and just be extremely passive-aggressive. I could try it. Hmm, But yes. first, it's so good, energy blasts out of our eyes and mouth because it's so <laughs> orgasmically spectacular. I mean, I can still think of a couple critiques, you know, it's like, it's so good if I loved eating garbage or something like that. You know, we, we, can, we can still pull the passive-aggressive route. You can, you, you know, I wouldn't be as upset if he just went, huh, alright, but the fact that he has to go overblown like this without even asking me how I feel about it, it's just, what are you trying to do here? I mean, is it funny? I don't think it's that funny. You know, there's a couple really good food anime out there, and I'm not talking food wars, I'm talking something subtle like sweetness and lightning, where... Black, Black Butler has a lot of delicious looking food. Like, the animated food looks better than real life food, I'm just gonna come out and say it, I'm gonna be that guy. But there is a unique, like, sexy subtlety to Sweetness and Lightning when it comes to describing the food. The people describe it as, wow, that's really good. Tell me what's in it. And then and then you just get a descriptor of how it is, and it's just like, oh my god, that sounds fantastic. Like, you don't actually have to show it to me. You can just describe it to me well, and I'll be like, oh my god, that does sound delicious. Yeah, I watch, like, Chopped all the time, so... Oh, Food Network shows. <laughs> How full are you, you poker stomach? And she just coughs rice. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be in character for them to, like, lace it with disgusting MSG? Like, old MSG or, like, <laughs> laxatives or something? I was just thinking the laxatives route. Like, our date's gonna end on the, on the can. I know it. So, what next? Um... How about a side mission? Huh. Was I right? Oh, it's our villainess for this chapter, right? It's a mysterious fortune teller! What is my fortune, Miss Fortune Teller? Ah, <laughs> Miss Fortune. <laughs> I get it. Actually, it's Mr. Fortune. The girl left before I could read it. She missed her fortune. Uh, well, hey. She asked. Might as well. I mean, this is for her sake, after all. I foresee that you will read a book in your near future. <laughs> oh my god, how did you know? Possibly after your date. By the way, good luck with your play. Uh, Klaatu Barada Nikto. Grandma Lama Ding Dong. Grim Grimoire. Valhalla United. Thirteen Sentinels Igus Rim. Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> God, there's a lot of titles out there that sound like incantations. <laughs> it's like, I call upon the power of Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle! That'd, that'd be crazy, you could just make spells out of uh, <laughs> subtitle names. <laughs> 
It's like a book of shadows, ties that bind! <laughs> ah, you, I foresee it. It is indeed the Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days! The Phantom Pain for answer! Ooh, that's actually really good. Verdict Day, Scholar of the First Sin! <laughs> Leafrasir! I'm just using From Software games now, so. I'm just looking at my collection here. I think Leafrasir is the, it more is the most interesting one we're going to get. Well, if you take all of your Artana Leco games, you could probably have some sort of German opera. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe take all my Alchemist games, put them all together, and into one long compound word. Hey, you ever made a word salad? Well, uh, let me cut the tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me toss all the uh, Atelier games into one big bowl and see what we get. It's like they're almost words. <laughs> like what's like what, what's called like Nor of Arcella or whatever. <laughs> yeah. like, what the hell is that? Ar Arcoga? You, you yeah you have a Q word that has no U. Do you know how English works? Or is it like supposed to be pseudo Latin? You know, I think if you were to take all the main characters and put all their, like, first names together, I think you might actually get an incantation. I think you might summon an archdemon. Speaking of archdemon, here is our villain. He's very, uh, theater about his movements. He's got shark teeth. I think I'm going to call you Mr. Shark Tooth. You remember when the villain of Sakura Wars 5 would, like, do these scheming scenes from, like, atop roofs at night or in back alleyways or hidden away with the real main demon of the chapter in some undisclosed location in the Dark Realm? But no, here he is, just in the streets! Oh, everything will burn, burn! <laughs> uh, yes, officer, that's the guy. He said everything was going to burn. I think we should take him in for questioning. Well, what a day. Let's have a rest in the park. Ah, sounds and, like a uh, fantastic idea. We are a couple minutes away from jumping from the fourth circle of this secret new hell right down to the eighth. Ah, uh, do you mind if I propose my incantation? Are you ready for it? Go for it. Rizalin Roberlona Sophie Tutoria Isha Logics Elmrumia Aisha! That's all the main protagonists from all the Atelier games. From PS3 onward. Oh my god, they hugged! Oh, you think that was the moment? Nope, that's not it. Somebody call the squad! We got some melted hearts over here! Was this game written by, like, a youth minister or whatever? It's like, <laughs> oh, my... oh, oh, he <laughs> caught her when she fell! How scandalous! Oh, or no, he didn't see anything! Like, come on! This is why our protagonist wears gloves so he doesn't sully the maiden's hands. When I think of Soccer Wars, I somehow think of smoldering romance, but right now, peril! How the hell did that happen? <laughs> I just wanted to feed the ducks! Alright, are you prepared, Niskel? Okay. Yeah, are you prepared I'm, for this? My full attention is on this scene right here. Well, obviously we gotta fucking save her, let's go! There's no time! Are you ready? Oh, we gonna so. pull some anime shit? Oh, let me see it. It's too late! So we launch ourselves in after her, better save her than, than us, and then... Magic? Wait! That's an actual grimoire! Is she a demon? She pulls this magic straight out of her ass! Oh, sorry, I'm a witch. And she is embarrassed by this. Hi, you have magic. We could kick the ass of the Chinese restaurant people and then... Fucking put yourself as a headliner! Hi, I perform actual magic. Come see the magician woman. 
Does that feel like too big of a leap, though? I feel like it does. I mean, there's always been, like, some supernatural elements, you know, sprinkled here and there. Like, you need spiritual magic to, to work the mechs. You got the demons, of course, doing their demon shit. But I think that was, like, several steps too far. Doing crazy 7th level wizard, like, wind spells. Like, come on, it feels like an isekai now. I got really scared, so I summoned the power of Windaga. And for some reason, this just completely breaks her fragile little mind. Now, if you gave me, like, the plot twist that using magic actually has negative effects on your mind and soul, that could be interesting. Like, you can only use it a certain number of times, and then you go full ham at the end of the game where you need to big beat the big bad. But for here, I don't think, sh like... I have a feeling they're going to go the route where she thinks of herself as a freak because she can use actual magic. Well, let's find out from the horse's mouth. Let's ask Su let's ask Sumire, who should know everything. Yeah, so she saved my bacon along with the bacon of a young kid, and now she is having a mental breakdown. Why would that spark some kind of breakdown? A pretty logical question. I mean... Is she hiding something? Is she just super hungry? Both of those, like, the left and right answers were awful. It is a power that she wants to keep secret. Why? The art of Libromancy! <laughs> Wait, so she's like a super magical librarian? She's a super magical book magician. <laughs> <laughs> because book her magic. family, her, their family have been, oh her family has been full of, uh, you know, mages and book users. Magic. And now she can wield magic with these books. And she wants to keep it a secret. That's why she is around books all the time and uh, drives a magic suit around. She wants to keep the fact that her book magic is 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 not what it, what it means. I mean, but I mean, she almost to fuck the books. But I mean, hey, she at least she can't do magic with them. But now oh she can't. Now, now she can do magic. She's a fucking freak. Oh god. Okay, I just had to look up. Look up if libromancy was an actual word. Bibliomancy works, and that's it's the use of books in divination, in other you know, in magical medicine and stuff like that. But now I just think she just uses that magic to own the libs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is so dumb. <laughs> like I don't care if you've got magic in your game. If she has special book powers, I don't give a shit. But why would you be, like, afraid of that? I mean, unless you can't control it, in which case you probably could have torn them in half with that wind magic. I mean, I think of a game called Eternal Sonata where there was a character who used magic and she was afraid by it because other people were afraid of her. Exactly. That Having that magic mean, in Eternal Sonata was basically, like, pinpointing you as something not of this world. You were dangerous. Yeah, you have this this disease that'll kill <clears throat> you and it could, and they don't understand it so it could spread to other people and you know it's that 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 it made actually it actually made sense. Here it's just uh oh! Actually, her real reason is really dumb. Well, are we going to learn that in this episode? Maybe. Well, I'll just keep with my theory that she's a Reddit user using libromancy. Yes, whenever she reads her uh, socialist books, that's when she has the most power. <laughs> but hey, leave it to me. Don't worry. I'm going to see it through this. Okay. We'll I will see. not let her face us alone. And for some reason... For Wait, some you, reason, that doesn't you seem to lose? inspire them. You're not, you're not going to lose points for this, are you? Well, I gain points from Anastasia. Okay. Stasia, Stasia. And that's it? Yeah. Wow. Really? Uh, okay. I guess we'll uh, go talk to Claris, but I can't really leave, so... Why do they give me control if all I can do is just go to the place where they want me to go? Was that a bromide on one of the uh, banisters there? Probably not. Okay. Open you know, the goddamn door! 
Everyone's I, been like bun knocking on your door for the past 25 minutes, but hey, let me in now. I kind of want this conversation to go the same way as that one skid in Family Guy. I don't know if you guys know the one. It was probably one of the funniest skits on that show. <laughs> well, don't leave when, me in the dark. It's w the one where Brian and Stewie have to go talk to the anchor that has the kid with the upside down face. And Brian says, Oh, I just have to. We're, we're both kind of distraught in the situa situation. I mean, it's turned our entire world upside down face. And then Stewie just takes just, like just eight stares. seconds to just <laughs> cock his head. <laughs> I mean, a conversation going that badly, I have a feeling there there's something happening here. Why is she outside the door? Oh, he was leaving. Got it. Yes. Okay, it looked like she, like, teleported outside of her room. You know, we could have just talked in your room. Everybody can see and hear us out here in the courtyard. How much do you know? Well, I know you have them. I mean, you use them on me. About everybody in a 10-mile radius saw it. Probably heard it. I'm pretty sure we gotta pay damages we did to the park because of your stupid book magic. Really, you're a liability. Get out of here. But, Wait, uh, really... I was right. I, I think your power is incredible. I actually called it. She thinks of herself as a monster. She thinks herself as a monster because she's so worried about using her powers for evil. Well, then don't use it for evil. Easy my as powers that. Are my, my powers are meant to save anyone. I mean, unless your counts... Like, if you open up your book and you cast, like, virus on somebody, yeah, I'm not gonna believe you. It's about how you use it. Yes, your power can be a weapon, but it is who wields the weapon. That means if it's destructive or protective. God, it's going over the age-old argument that... Guns don't actually kill people. K people kill people. It's so cliched, we've already got an answer for this. It's like, Claris, as long as you wield it correctly, then you should use them. Because they were used to do naughty things for the crown doesn't mean that you have to do that too. You can start to clean up your legacy instead of just hold on to it. You know, it's kind of selfish, really. Claris, let me tell you a little story. This is going back, way back in the day. Do you remember a show called Inuyasha? Yeah, there was a dude named Moroku who had a black hole in his fucking right hand. He had a black hole in his fucking right hand. He could, like, literally suck in any demon and they'd just be dead. And he used that for good. He has a power that he could literally use to end the world, and he was just like, nah, I'm gonna use it on bad guys. You see, we're giving them too much real talk for them to take seriously. And they're hiding back there! <laughs> so what other spells do you know, Claris? Do you know... <laughs> charm? Do you know how to make a love potion? Because I really want Sakura... to love me. You got any cantrips? Because I'm casting at large right now. <laughs> and so, inspired by having her greatest secret found out by the one person she respects, I guess, tolerates, kind of likes, doesn't really think about, it gives her the resolve to put an ending to her play. We don't know anything about the plot, the characters, the setting, nothing about this apparently character-defining script for a play she's written. All we get is a five-second scene after the fight next episode, and that's it. It could have been a fan fiction for all we know, and it would have had just as much impact. What? A great date. I mean, if I went on a date with some chick and found out she had magical powers, I'd be like, hell yeah! 
God, leave her alone, why don't you? <laughs> she has the words written. All work and no play makes Clarice a dull girl. Written all over it. <laughs> I decided on the best ending. Everybody dies in the end. Ah, the Shakespearean angle. And then it was all a dream. And then it was retconned. And then the events were, re were reversed. And then it was the sled. And then two timelines are created and then they're both erased. But then that gets reversed in the new director's cut. <laughs> and then Clarice killed Dumbledore. I will keep my readers guessing forever. <laughs> okay, Clarice, I think it's time for bed. How about we go on another date? Because that last one went perfectly well. I, I put her to bed, I step outside of her room, and they're like, how is she? And it's like, we're fine. We're gonna go with Romeo and Juliet. Okay, places, people! <laughs> you lock her from the outside. <laughs> yeah, let's let's uh, let's bring her out after the play's done. I think we put a, a little too much pressure on her. By the way, we're under attack. What? Just like out of nowhere? Yeah, just all of a sudden, mid-scene, Siren Blair, and now we're all here. Well, Clarice is useless. She's half asleep. Boy, you remember when we uh, used to slide down those cool slides and change into our outfits, and we'd all, like, you know, jump down there and salute in a really dynamic and expressive cutscene. And now it's just fade and we're here. Who cares? Hey, what? uh... Who is this for? But we got, we got, like, another month before this game comes out. Can we just, you know, just move it all along? It's like, I don't know what they're trying to do here. The scenes aren't sexy. They're just really, really dumb. There's no electrifying character moments happening. Combat's crap. They don't really care about anything. Everything's been retconned. Who is this for? People who like miniskirts. Or, you know, regular skirts. What's up, Clarice? I'm sorry <laughs> for people who have, you know, self-esteem issues. Just realize, ladies and gentlemen out there who are watching this, you are better than all of these characters. I would really enjoy this game if Kamiyama was like a hard-ass fucking captain. And he's like, hey, I don't think you people realize that people's lives are at stake. So maybe we can stop the, the, the shitty little problems we have here, leave them at the door, and get out there and save the world. I don't know what the people. I don't know what the hell you people have been doing here for the past however many years till everything turned to this shit. But now I'm here and I'm gonna bring you back up to the front lines and we're gonna save the goddamn world. So psych up. So you're saying the only thing this scene needs to make it 100% better is for Kamiyama to slam his fist on the desk and then bam, scene better. Actually, yeah, that that would literally make it at least 15% better if he slams his fist down on the table so that the girls go, whoa. Because I then mean, they're they're afraid for their captain, you know, seeing a side of them they've never seen, but also kind of attractive because it shows his human side. And then they look inside themselves and realize they can be better, and then wow! That's how you create good drama! They're not even trying! And you know, that was always my favorite part of Ace Attorney. As soon as Phoenix Wright slammed his hands on the desk, I was like, hell yeah! It's time to point out some evidence! Remember, we gotta keep it secret. We have no money. We have literally no money. We are so in the red it hurts. There is no way that we can cut back on anything at all. We were are those... so broke. Those were actual houses. Those were homes that just got flipped 90 degrees. Why? There's no way we can cut back on anything. Absolutely nothing. Hey, uh, how was our theater doing in Soccer Wars 5? Doing okay? Yeah, it's doing alright. Okay. I, I mean, just wanted to make sure we weren't I mean, they consistent. had something just as stupid, but I mean... I mean, the, I mean, the lips that say go, the fucking slingshot that comes out of Times Square, you know. <laughs> In the fucking anime of Soccer Wars 5, the Statue of Liberty is like a fucking weapon. <laughs> oh, they pulled a Ghostbusters. Oh my god, it's still going. Okay. I know! 
So it just doesn't th stop. This guy was like just introduced, right? During the date. Yes. We haven't seen him any other times. Maybe, like maybe once, but I don't think so. Either way. No, I don't think we've seen him before. So he's just here. He's just here now. Okay. Man, there's something to be desired with these 3D models. I'm sorry. Like, they look really good, but 3D models don't convey emotion very well. Oh, they convey emotion just fine. It's that the way they animate, they don't convey a whole lot of emotion. Well, that, sorry, that that's what I was getting at. I show Because I show you Tales of Berseria, which had very expressive and emotive 3D models. So, let's check out our team status, what we got going on. Claris is on the second level now, great. Finally. Finally. Sakura still up front and center. Just, hey, Kimiyama. I'm like, hey. And it's like, do you want it? And I'm like, no, I don't. Uh, well, next time on Let's Play New Sakura Wars, this is the part of the combat that will finish up Chapter 2. See you next time.